Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve absolute value equations and check for extraneous solutions. So the reason why this, this is going to be a little bit different here um, compared to some of my other solving equations is because you can see we have a variable, um, well, on most of them, variable on both sides, um, except for that problem. But we're going to get into that one in just a second. So also previously, you can see we have some additional operations. We just don't have an absolute value equals um, a number like we've done before, which was one step, two steps, um, and so forth. So we have a couple extra steps, which is very, very important. Now, we'll get to those in just a second. Um, but for the first problem, we're kind of fortunate. We have the absolute value is isolated. That means there's nothing else on the side of the absolute value. It's just absolute value is equal to x. So previously, we've done problems um, where it's just equal to a number. Now it's equal to an x. So the process, though, that we've done before is going to be exactly the same. You're going to create your two cases. So we do 3x minus 4 equals x, and 3x minus 4 equals negative x. Okay. Now, again, we go back through and, again, use our inverse operations to go ahead and solve. So here, um, but, oh, OK, well, I got a little ahead of myself. So now you notice, though, these equations are not um, two-step equations. I have a variable on the left side and the right side. So they're going to require a little bit additional work. So what we need to do here. Before I can solve these, I've got to get the variable to the same side. So in this case, I have to add an x to both sides. In this case, I'm going to have to add an x. I'm sorry, subtract an x to both sides. In this case, I have to add an x. Now, what happens when we do that is 3x minus x is 2x minus 4. x minus x is equal to 0. Here, I'm adding them. Those become 0. But 3x plus x is 4x minus 4 equals 0. Now I can go ahead and solve. So using my inverse operations here, I simply just add 4 to both sides. And I get 2x is equal to 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2. You can see my final answer is x equals 2. Over here, I have to add 4 to both sides. Duh. So when I add 4 to both sides, I obtain 4x is equal to 4. Then I divide by 4 on both sides, and I have x equals 1. OK, now, since there is a variable on both sides, you're, it's really, really important to make sure you check for extraneous solutions. That's not really going to come up. Uh, it's not really going to, it's not going to come up when we have an absolute value equal to a number, but when we have variable on both sides, it's extremely important. So let's go ahead and check our solutions. Uh, I'm not going to show the work, I'm just going to talk it out because um, I don't have any more room for this problem. So you plug in 2. Six times, or 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 4. 6 minus 4 is going to be 2. Absolute value is 2. We'll plug 2 in for this x. It equals 2. Good. Let's try 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. If you plug 1 in for this x, it's 1. 1 equals 1. So both of our solutions work. All right, so now let's go into the next case. Now, in the next case, you can see that I don't have variable on both sides, but I have a variable on the side of my absolute value. And this is one of the most common mistakes I see students make when solving absolute value equations. Because we've been so often doing problems where the absolute value is already isolated. So we create our two cases, right? That's the first step. And that's basically all I say. You know, first step, set two cases. The main important thing, though, is you, you can only set two cases when the absolute value is isolated, meaning it's by itself on that side of the equation. So here you have absolute value, or x plus two, absolute value of x plus 24, but then it's plus 7x. So this absolute value is not isolated. It's being added by 7x. So before I create my two cases, I have to get rid of that 7x on the same side as the absolute value. Now what I have is the absolute value of x plus 24 is equal to a negative 7x. Now I have an absolute value equal to an expression. And it ends up being a variable on both sides. So it's going to look just like, again, this one. But you know, we're going to have to, again, check our solutions. Now the absolute value is isolated. I create my two cases. And in this case, I have x plus 24 equals negative 7x. And then x plus 24 equals ne um, negative, negative 7x. So remember. You're you're doing you're negating this, right? You're doing the you're keeping it the same, and then you're negating it. So if I negate a negative seven x, that's actually going to be a positive seven x. So I'm just going to write that in there. Okay. So now we go ahead and solve again, just like we had to do before. We have a variable on both sides. So before we start getting into our inverse operations, we got to get the variable to the same side. Um, in this case, I'm actually 
I'm just going to solve for the variables on the on the right side rather than doing rather than adding it everything to the left side to solve because I know a lot of you are like oh I love solving on the left side here you can see I added some extra steps though um, I had to by subtracting over then I had to add I had to bring the x over here and then I had to bring everything else over so I'm just going to subtract an x on the left side in this case and by doing that I now obtain 24 equals negative 8x, and this becomes 24 equals positive 6x. Now I can just divide by negative 8 on both sides and divide by 6 on both sides. Therefore, now I have uh, negative 3 is equal to x, or you could rewrite that as x is equal to negative 3. And then over here, I have 4 is equal to x, or x is equal to 4. Okay. Now again, remember we have really when I rewrote this, I have a variable on both sides, so we got to make sure we check our answer. So basically, when checking your answer, I didn't really explain that well over here. You're going to plug in your solution in for x on both sides of the equation. So if I plug in negative three, negative three plus um, 24 is 21. Absolute value of 21 is 21. Okay. So the left side has positive 21. Let's go to the right side. Negative three times negative seven is positive 21. So this one checks out. I should probably do like some little check marks, checks. They all work. Now let's do 4. Um, 4 plus 24 is 28. Absolute value of 28 is um, 28. So the left side, oh, I should do here. The left side is 20, positive 28. Here, if I plug a 4 in for x, negative 7 times 4 is negative 28. Well, positive 28 does not equal negative 28. So therefore, this is extraneous. And it's not a solution to this equation. So across like a little x across it, or a little slash. OK, um, in, this occasion, in this example, now I have an x on both sides. Um, I still have an x on both sides, but my absolute value, again, is not isolated. I have 4x plus 5, absolute value of that, minus 4. So I got whatever is on the same side of the absolute value, you got to use inverse operations to get it to the other side. So here, I'm going to add 4. And if both of them were on the same side, you'd have to get both of them over, because the main goal before you do your um, two, before you do your two cases, you've got to have the absolute value by itself. So now I have absolute value of 4x plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 4. Now I create my two cases. So I have 4x plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 4. And then here is another big mistake that happens. Students negate the second side, but they forget that when you're negating, you got to make sure that you negate both of them. So I'm going to put them in parentheses to remind myself that. You're not just negating the negative 2x. You're negating the 2x and the 4. So negate, put them in parentheses. That's going to tell you to apply distributive property. So really, you have 4x plus 5 equals negative 2x minus 4. Just make sure you negate both of them. It happens all the time with binomials. It's, it's easy when it's just a monomial. You just negate one, right? Um, but here, binomial, you've got to negate both of them. So now we need to go ahead and solve. So again here, I'm going to get the x's to the same side. So I'll subtract the 2x on both sides. I get uh, 2x plus 5 is equal to 4. Subtract 5, subtract 5. 2x is equal to negative 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to a negative 1 half. I'll check that in a second. Over here, I'm still going to solve for x on the left side, so I'm going to add a 2x. I obtain 6x plus 5 is equal to a negative 4. Subtract a 5 on both sides. It's a horrible 5. And what I obtain is 6x is equal to a negative 9. Divide by 6, divide by 6. x is equal to a negative 9 over 6, which I can uh, reduce by dividing it. I can reduce 9 over 6 to give me 3 halves. So that's a negative 3 halves. OK, so now we've got to go ahead and plug our fractions into back into our solution. Now, it really doesn't matter which solution you want to pick. You could plug them into um, your original equation. Or you can um, plug them into the one where you have everything isolated. I like to go ahead and choose where, where you have the absolute value isolated. And again, I kind of ran out of space here. 
Um, so I'm going to kind of say this, you know, I'm going to just talk my way through it. Um, so just try to follow along with my operations. So for, so I'm, what I'm going to do is, again, take my solution and plug it in for x on both sides. So negative 1 half times 4 is going to be a negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. So I have a positive 3 on the left side. When I multiply negative 1 half here, I have 2 times negative 1 half, which is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is um, positive 3. So this solution works. Now let's check negative, negative 3 halves. So if you plug in a negative 3 halves in for x, 4 times negative 3 halves is um, going to be, well, is going to be a negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is going to be negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. So the left side is 1 for this case. When I plug in negative 3 halves here, I get negative 3 plus 4 is um, positive 1. So both of these solutions work out. All right, so now let's go ahead and check in our last one. So again, you can see here my absolute value has already been isolated. Perfect, right? Less work for me to be able to do. Now I can just go ahead and create my two cases. So I'm create my two cases. I have 9 minus 2x is equal to 10 plus 3x. And then over here, I have 9 minus 2x is equal to. Now again, I'm not going to show my work here. I'm just simply going to rewrite it as negative 10 minus 3x. I basically distributed in my head, but I'm showing my work. Now I'm going to solve for my x. Um, doesn't really matter. I'm going to solve for, actually what I'll do is I'll solve. I'm going to solve this one for the x on the right-hand side. Here I'm going to solve for x on the left-hand side, because I always like making my variable positive. But it doesn't matter. You can solve for x on the, on the left side, or you can solve for x on the right side, like I did over there. But the main important thing is, before you start solving using inverse operations, is getting your x on the same side. So what I'm going to do here is, first thing is I'm going to add a 2x to both sides. Now what I have is 9 equals 10 plus 5x. I'll subtract a 10 to both sides. I, uh, I like just using my color code. <sighs> OK. Subtract a 10 to both sides. And what I obtain is negative 1 equals 5x. Divide by 5 on both sides. And I get negative 1 fifth is equal to x, or x equals negative 1 fifth. All right, so now let's go and get to the next one. The next one, I'm going to add the 3x to the other side. Instead of adding 2x to both sides, that's going to make, the neg that's going to make the x negative over there. So I'm going to add a 3x to both sides. Therefore, now I obtain 9 plus x equals negative 10, as that goes to 0. Then I will undo adding 9 by subtracting the 9 on both sides. And I get x equals x equals are you serious? I don't remember this. x equals a negative 19. I don't remember those answers when I was doing this problem. OK, yeah, I guess it works. All right, so now let's go ahead and plug them in. Again, we can plug them into the left side or on the right side. Now, this one, I might have to do a little math work here. Oh, man, this does not look like fun. Whew. All right. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do is do 9 minus 2x, 9 minus 2. But instead of multiply x, I'm going to multiply by 1 fifth. And that's going to have to equal the same thing on the right-hand side. So what I have is 9 minus 2 over 5. Multiply by 5 over 5. So that's going to be 45. Again, you could just type this in your calculator, but I don't, I'm not going to use my calculator on this one. So um, minus 2 over 5, which is 43 over 5. So that's what the left-hand side looks like. Let's go ahead and do the right-hand side. So I'll do 10 plus 3 times 1 fifth. Well, multiply that over. It's 10 plus 3 over 5. Get common denominators. Multiply by 5 over 5. So that's 50 over 50. Oh, that's a negative. <laughs> that's a negative. So that actually becomes positive, positive. So that's actually 47. OK, so that's a negative. So I'm actually subtracting these. 
So it's 50 minus 3 over 5, which is 47 over 5. So perfect. It works. Awesome. So that one works. Uh, let's go ahead and try 19. So if I plug in negative 19 um, in for x here, I have negative 2 times negative 19 is going to be a positive 38. Plus 9 is going to give me 47. Absolute value of 47 is positive 47. Now let's go and plug in uh, negative 19 in for x here. Well, negative 19 um, times positive 3 is going to give me a negative 47. And then plus 10 will give me a negative 37. So since negative 37 is not equal to 47, this is extraneous, meaning it's not a solution to the absolute value equation. So we'll exit out. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve absolute value equations and check for your extraneous solutions. Thanks.